Hey guys, I felt the need to preface this video, uh, which was intended to share my experience of identifying insects in thin, damaged areas of my yard, and then show a product with the active ingredient, active ingredient of bifenthrin that I use to go ahead and treat the areas. Um, at the time, I was relatively confident that what I was seeing were southern chinch bugs. I'm here in coastal Carolina, um, but as I began researching it a little bit more and looking into it, uh, I'm, I'm led to believe what I'm seeing is something else. So that's where I need your help. Um, towards the end of this video, I'll go ahead and put up some, some close-ups of the insects I found. I actually had access to a microscope and took a few pictures of what I saw under the microscope, hoping that may help some of you guys. But again, uh, at the time of shooting the video, I thought they were I had chinch bugs, but I may be wrong. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, I still went ahead and treated the areas for both chinch bugs and mole crickets. And uh, if you could, just stay tuned to the end there. If you feel like you can add some, some information, help me out a little bit, go ahead and put a comment here down below. I've got a few areas in my yard that appear a little bit thinner than others. Um, and this usually is indicative of maybe a disease issue or possible insect damage. So you can kind of see here in this area, there's some bare spots. I'm going to take a closer look and see if I've got any insects in there. Here's one spot where there's a transition from a not so healthy area into some, some healthier lawn. And I've had issues with chinch bugs in the past, so I'm suspecting that may be the issue here that I'm seeing. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of move my hand into the lawn a little bit, into the grass, and see if any of these chinch bugs actually uh, come up on my hands. There's other tests you can do with uh, putting a coffee can into the grass and filling the coffee can with water and then the insects would emerge at the surface. Uh, but for now I'm just going to see if I can do a visual test and see if I can uh, see any of those coming to the surface. So I've had my hand in place for Quite a few minutes now and I, I haven't had any actually uh, walk over my hand but I am starting to see them in the grass blades. This area here has got a significant number of chinch bugs. There's a lot of activity here so it's what I'm finding is that various portions sections of the the lawn I'm seeing some are more infected than others but uh, needless to say I've got to put some sort of treatment down to uh, see if I can kill a lot of these small bugs. If I keep the camera still here for a second, I think you'll have an opportunity to see all of them running across the grass blades. So it's pretty bad and uh, they are obviously having an effect on the the appearance of the lawn so we'll see if we can go ahead and fix that. So as I'm doing my chinch bug inspection I'm finding a lot of areas that are almost spongy, uh, real soft and you can almost feel like it almost feels like there's tunneling that's happening underneath the soil, underneath the grass I'm sorry and if you if I look closely and we had a real heavy rain last night you can kind of see different little areas where there's been some fresh soil that's been pushed up like right here so I have a hunch that I've also got mole crickets and based on what I've what I've read online mole crickets have really become an issue here in the last few years and so I'm gonna do a test where we take two gallons of water with uh, two tablespoons of dish soap and we'll pour that over this area for example about two square feet and supposedly if there's mole crickets, they would surface over a few minutes. So uh, let me go get that prepared and then we'll give it a test and see what we got. All right, so I've got my two gallons of water with two tablespoons of Dawn dish detergent. So we'll go ahead and target this area. Um, I'm seeing these little small little mounds in, in various little areas across the, the grass. and. It just so happens that they coincide with some of the thinner, thinner areas. So I'm pretty, uh, I think it's going to be pretty likely that we do find some 
mole crickets, but this will be a great exercise uh, just to see what we do find, and I haven't, I've never done this before. So I'm going to pour this over about two, two square foot of area. And we'll let that settle into the soil and we'll give it about, oh yeah, that didn't take long. I'm already seeing activity. So let me get you guys a little bit closer look. Yeah. Although now we're looking for the spider popped up very quickly. Okay, so it's been several minutes, 20, 25 minutes or so, and um, I've actually tested a few different areas here. I tested uh, in between these two sticks, then another area in between these two sticks, and other than a few spiders, and I've still seen some chinch bugs, obviously, I haven't seen anything that resembles a mole cricket coming to the surface. So I don't know if I'm not testing it properly, or maybe I just, I'm not testing a good area, or I don't have a lot of mole crickets, Whatever it may be, um, I'm still pretty convinced I do have them based on the evidence I've seen where I've seen the uh, tunneling uh, just below the surface and um, just the, the thinning out of the grass. Uh, I'm going to treat for both chinch bugs and mole crickets. Uh, I'm probably going to use a product that has bifenthrin, which is, uh, I know, uh, effective on both chinch bugs and mole crickets. But I don't have any, so I'll have to order some. And then when that comes in, we'll go ahead and pick up uh, where I'm leaving off and we'll go ahead and apply it as a treatment. So it's been a couple days since I uh, identified the chinch bugs in my lawn. I also did the test for the mole crickets. And though that test didn't yield any results, uh, I'm still going to move forward as if I do have mole crickets. I'm seeing signs of them. I just haven't seen them physically uh, themselves. So. I did receive my order of Bifen IT. This is the product I ended up going with. This is a 7.9% uh, of active ingredient Bifenthrin. Uh, it's also offered as Bifen XTS. XTS is an oil-based product. This here is water-based. Um, but uh, this is what I'm gonna use, and I think it'll be extremely effective on the chinch bugs as well as the mole crickets. At least that's what I've read. Um, so I'm going to apply it today with my orthodialin spray. Uh, the label recommends one ounce, oh, anywhere from one half to one ounce of the bifen per thousand square feet. The higher concentration of one ounce per thousand will offer uh, longer residual effects. So that's kind of where I'm going to be. I'm going to uh, target that one ounce per 1,000 square foot. Uh, applying it with the orthodialin spray. Uh, so uh, I typically will use one tank for 4,000 square feet. So what I'll do is I'll put four ounces of the bifen, which will give me one ounce per thousand square feet. And then I would fill the rest of the tank up to 32 ounces. And then that would give me uh, four equal sec segments of eight ounces per thousand square feet, right? So if I put the eight thousand or eight ounces down per thousand, uh, one of those eight ounces will have the bifen in there. And typically I use a setting of two ounces and from my experience doing a single pass over a thousand square feet, the two ounce setting would put down about eight ounces of tank solution. Um, but since the Bifen label instructions do recommend a higher volume for insects like mole crickets that uh, tend to be subsurface, what I'm going to do is use a one ounce setting and then I'm just going to do two passes. So I'll use my, my normal walk speed and I'll do kind of a crisscross pattern uh, to get better coverage. Uh, or to, say, to get even coverage, but also put more volume down to really penetrate the soil. So I'm gonna use this measuring cup I've got here, 
it uh, measures up to two ounces so I'll fill it up twice that'll give me the four ounces I need So that's four ounces of bifenite tea. This here just has some water in it. Okay. And I'm just gonna use the water to fill it up to 32 ounces. So I've got four ounces of bifen and then just topped it off to 32 ounces with water. So I've got this solution ready to go for 4,000 square feet. Uh, a few more things I wanted to point out was uh, the instructions on the label recommend for mole crickets to apply it uh, later in the evening. Uh, so it's uh, towards the end of the day. So I'll go ahead and apply at this time. The other thing is for chinch bugs, it did recommend irrigating if you're uh, ground is dry. So I did run the sprinklers a little bit earlier today just to moisten the soil. So I think I've got those bases covered. Uh, typically at the two ounce setting uh, I would apply about uh, four, ounce, four gallons of water per thousand square feet. So now that I'm using the one ounce uh, I should be somewhere around eight gallons per thousand square feet. Alright, so this is the part where I need your help. Let me know in the comments section below if the insects that I'm seeing in my St. Augustine grass are in fact chinch bugs or something different altogether. Uh, are the two images shown here the same insect at different phases uh, or different stages of its development? Uh, or are these two different insects? Um, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm not real sure. I would thought initially that I had chinch bugs. But um, looking at some of the other images online, uh, these don't really line up entirely. Uh, the image there in the lower left looks closer to maybe what's called a false chinch bug, but even, even then I'm not sure. So do me a favor, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to learn and uh, hear more about what I've got.